It says on air on my end. Let's go with it. Yep, I can see it. Yep, We're there, live. Right. Okay, hey, welcome everybody. The Spincast Cycling Show, Brian Kellison, Casey Shum, Lisa Vries, not with us tonight. Brian White, not with us tonight. I'm actually flying the USS Enterprise from my palatial state in California. Casey's joining me from Indiana. Illinois. Illinois. Why did I think Close. Indiana? Ah, it's all the same. I think it's really? all the same. One of those eyes. Yeah, I think we had that uh, uh, U.S. Uh, geography test uh, many years ago, probably like 30 years ago. So I digress. As we can see here, my, uh, my rice cooker's up. It's ready to go. We are now cooking. So rice is cooking, and then by the end of the show, it'll be, it'll be warm. No, it's not. It's not cooking. That's just, <laughs> that's just a reference. Uh, but we're going to cook into some uh, topics here. Uh, we had a good show with uh, Tom Thrall last, last week. Uh, and then a lot happened this week. Uh, the big, quote unquote, big release <laughs> of Jarvis I- Island is back. Uh, I guess it was only for beta users. You want to give us the history on Jarvis Island really quick? For people? Yeah, I'm, I mean, Jarvis was the original Swift. When Swift came out, I was, I'm was i user 1412, and I got, my, I got onto Swift. It was Christmas week uh, 10 years ago, uh, okay. 2014, and Jarvis was the first world, and I don't know how long. So was it, it called Zwift then? It was Zwift, yeah. Okay, okay. But but the the world was Jarvis, which Jarvis Island was a, it's an island in the Pacific. It's it's near one of the islands that like Japanese and Americans like met on to sign the peace treaty in World War Two or something really? like that. Like it's out in that area, yeah. Um, if you actually pull oh, it up on a map, but not the name of the the island is not. This is a made up name. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, we would always look it up because the original Jarvis, like when you pulled it up on a map, like when you when it Stravaed that it actually went to an island in the Pacific. Like right, right, right. That and, and it was, it's a real place. Do you know um, the origin of the name? I don't know. Um, I thought it I was because it's like a databasing term. It, I think I've it heard could Jarvis. have been. Isn't J- yeah. no? That's Jason. Is Jason? Jason is a Jason is a databasing thing. Oh, maybe yeah. I got those confused. I thought Jarvis was like a insider, like a, a my Q- SQL sort of like term for something, and they oh. just you, they just named it. I don't know. I, can I deal t- with a lot of that stuff. speculation. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you wouldn't be like, no, no, it has nothing to do. with I don't that, know right? that term <laughs> from my database area. Right. Um. But yeah, Jarvis. Jarvis was was the original. Um. I don't know exactly how long it went. Um, I actually ran into an old uh, Zwift friend who hadn't been on Zwift for six years. He was riding Jarvis for the first time today, and I saw his name in in the ride, and I, I kind of called him out, and he came in my chat, and we chatted. Um, and he was user 50,000, and he said he didn't ride Jarvis back then. Mm-hmm. And he started December of 2015, so a year after me. So. Um, Jarvis did not survive a year. Um, trying to remember like the iterations of Jarvis when it came out, it was a single loop. Um, it didn't really change other than some graphical stuff when it was out. And then they implemented reverse direction, U-turning, riding okay. it both directions. From was an wherever addition. you were? Or like you had to go to the end and then you could turn around and go back? You could U-turn anywhere. I don't even think like you could start in the opposite direction. You always started in a specific direction and you had to U-turn to go the other way. Everyone spawned in the same spot. Yeah. You all spawned in the same spot. um, And then, yeah, you, you could U-turn to ride it the opposite direction. But yeah, that's, that's what Jarvis was um, back in the day. You know, I, I'm not really nostalgic about it. Um, Good. I I'm, rode it today. I, I rode it once earlier in the week, just one lap, and I rode like the ten lap thing on it today. Yeah, and I don't even really remember that route. Like it, everything was so different then. We weren't racing; we were just riding. It was getting on something to do, right? We didn't have events. We didn't have any of that stuff back on Jarvis. So, um, what what I did say later in my later in my stream today, though, is started to feel like 
old Jarvis because it was like an 80 person starting pin and we kind of shattered because it was one of those, you know, group ride, not a race kind of things. Mm -hmm. So it kind of fell apart toward the front later yeah. in the thing. So it was just grabbing two or three guys and uh, Grim, which is one of our, our Twitch uh, John frequent Shin. guys. Yes. Yeah. Friend of the show. Yeah, friend of the show. He he actually found me in there, and him and I kind of teamed up the last couple of laps. And I'm like, this feels like old Jarvis because that's what old Jarvis was. There's 15 people online. That, that That's all that yeah, was yeah. there. You just found somebody to draft with, you know, that was roughly going the same pace as you. And um, it, that's how that's you... sort of longing for that. somebody that was real. Yeah, Or it that was. you knew. Well, you kind of knew everyone because everyone. it was a very... T it's like going into a small town and everybody, like the mayor is the doctor and they yep. do, they deliver all the, and then the vet, they're like the mayor, the doctor, the vet. And like everyone knows it's so like that doc Hollywood sort of thing where like, you know, when you could see everyone, everybody. Yeah. You could see everybody and you knew everybody. That's the mystique of it. And that's where I'm mm -hmm. like, I was like excited to hear you go. It wasn't that nostalgic because yeah. a lot of us on regular Zwift, like I joined whatever I joined, I signed up for it, but I never signed, never wrote it except for like the, the trial until like 2019. But like, I didn't know anything about Jarvis. I didn't know anything about the beta, the, all that other stuff. And there wasn't this sort of like longing for like the first vert, like the, for lack of a better thing, a throwback to the old times, like a, yeah. like a world of Warcraft classic or mm -hmm. the, the old timers uniforms like for like a baseball team for lack, you know, yeah. for uh, lack of a better uh, example. And it's like, did Zwift hype it enough? Was it even worth hyping enough? Was it even, was enough time was spent trying to make it interesting to make something uh, out of nothing? And it's like, it's what, 4.3 kilometers or however long it is. It's not it, even that long of stuff. And it's like, it's not dynamic from what I have seen, because I haven't done it yet, so like the, if the rocks go away and I don't even ever see it, that's fine. It's this sort of like, ta-da, and like no one's, it's like it's like a, a bad magic show that you already know the trick. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a nice little route. I think it'd be fun to race on. The, the hill oh, maybe, is... Yeah, maybe so. The hill's a good little punch, um, but it's short enough that, you know, the savvy racer can hang with the beasts kind of thing. Um, you know, doing 10 loops of it today, like it, 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 it could get rough to race on. I, like I said, I like it for a nice little short course kind of thing. But um, the, the first time into it, it is kind of cool what Swift did with that. But also, you know, they... I think they led everyone to believe it was going to be this massive, like one time event. Yeah. Everybody log in at a certain time, but it's really just the first time you ride into it, like the rocks come tumbling down and your screen shakes. And I kind of laughed that I think, I think the guy who designed that, I think all he did is grab his mouse and shake the screen like for like for 30 seconds. And that's the effect you get on the screen. It's, yeah. it's like, it's like you're in a game that the mouse is controlling where your camera looks and you just grab the mouse and shake it a little bit. Like right. that's what it looks like for 30 seconds when you roll in and then the rocks come tumbling down and then, then that's it, you know? Um, yeah. That's so the thing is, is, is Zwift good at calling back to their history? Some companies are, and some, some companies are not. And I don't know if this, if this hit as well as it should, instead of just focusing on, new and progressive and moving forward yeah, i don't know you know it i don't think it's an it, i don't know that it was worth the effort that they did if even me being being og yeah, and you the would nostalgia be the one that would appreciate the most in, in all of that like it, it's cool to see and it's a good little bit of road but the amount of effort that they put into this they probably could have just put into better things right yeah more roads but maybe not just I mean, this is five kilometers of road that is a circle with one way in and one way out. It doesn't connect two parts. You know, we kind of laughed. I, I saw somebody post on Facebook, right? Zwift did their annual road release. We added five kilometers of roads and 200 kilometers of routes, right? Because yeah. they just made 15 different routes that add this circle into their route. You know? <laughs> so the the other part of the, on the backside of the Epic, that was this year as well, right? 
Uh, that yeah, came out this it, year. it was. So it that's was, part of it. Yeah, yeah, it was probably Scotland in this was last year. year. Yeah, yeah. So this calendar year, but yeah, it's it. Like I said, it doesn't seem like like if you do a throwback or you do a callback to your history. Does this does this signify things for people that are nostalgic about it? And since it was only the beta, it wasn't like the first Watopia sort of thing where everyone that was sort of, it was open to everybody. You could go back to that. It was, this was a select few of people that did it and then poof, it was gone. It, 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 it seems like it, it, it fell on deaf ears. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, in reality, I mean, Zwift is saying that there are over a million subscribers now based on what we saw in some numbers for tour of Watopia. That's probably true. And it's somewhere less than 50,000 user IDs that were assigned while Jarvis was alive, probably more in the 20, 30,000 range. So you're looking at what 1% maybe of active users that wrote on Jarvis that would be nostalgic about it, maybe 2%. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. I really, I don't dislike anything it. Anything from Zwift is good. Yeah. Like anything from Zwift is good. Now, I'm hypercritical because I think I would like for them to do better when they do things. Yeah. But since we're so starved with content, I know there's a bunch of people out there that are fine with what what's going on. Like, we're cool with what we got. I'm very happy yeah. with what we got. And then there's people like us that are like, we want more and better <laughs> yeah you know and so like i i don't I, I i'm with you on the 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 wording of the marketing or the messaging was hey it's gonna be one it's gonna be a one-time event come all, join us all like everyone wake up early do your it's like new year's or not new year's because new year's is a rolling clock but it's like this is just for like the the olympic ceremony for the thing it could be tape delayed or whatever but if you want to join yeah. us live you join us at whatever 10 o'clock gmt or utc or whatever you want to call it and then i have to wake up because i'm in california to do it to experience it regardless of people are mad or not like yeah that's what i think it would have been a little bit more significant and like hey we're going to celebrate our history and all these other things it was sort of like everyone gets to experience their own way yeah, and I, I mean, I feel like they, they're having a birthday season instead of a birthday day or a birthday week, right? Like they're trying to be like, oh, 10 year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I mean, and they're that's... doing the, like everything they're doing through the entire winter season is about this 10 year. And it's like, okay, we get it. You're 10 years. Like, let's do a month or something, right? Celebrate, no, 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 you know, no. and, and then move on. I disagree. I disagree. Because if you think of it like it's like the 50th anniversary of Disneyland or the the 75th anniversary it's like it's a good marketing thing to kind of because this is like entry fee to the exclusive club they gotta do with. more than that oh i'm with you on, i'm yeah, with, yeah. Oh, I'm with you i guess that's what i'm saying is no 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 the, you want more everything but like, they're yeah. doing is 10 years yeah, yeah. and it's like there it's it, just imagine if it was you know like another company that's sort of offering up a exclusive club and not coming through with tons of the celebratory st stuff throughout the season to go, Hey, this is the, this is the, whatever the hundredth anniversary of Walt Disney or whoever. Right. When you have that, then you do, then you do little, uh, uh, celebrations throughout the year and you yeah. go, okay, this is, this is the, whatever the season of like, well, you do Halloween and you do the, you do the Thanksgiving stuff and you do the, the Christmas stuff when in North America, some other places, uh, uh, for uh, seasonal celebrations. I'm okay with them doing 10 years of stuff, but their 10 years stuff is not as impactful because the audience isn't as, you know, geeked up on it. Like they, I've been, they think they are, that they, I believe they think that, that the fans are into it. Like most of us are not totally into the celebratory stuff. We're just into getting a good sweat on you know? Yeah. So, I know he's doing, he's, we're, we're trying, we're running, 
he's 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 the navigator and i'm the the the, the captain of the ship i have the chat up which i never have chat up but i have chat up just to make sure that we're live and you can hear us uh so th the the point is it comes back to the same thing is like it's something that they're putting time into but are they following through on not it, it's not even the promises it's more of like hey we're doing a 10-year anniversary does it matter like the cake the cake at the party isn't as good as you think it is yeah i'd like to be more but i am so glad it's not a velodrome like i know everybody oh, yeah, wants a velodrome but i'm like i don't want a velodrome i think, velodrome I think you're right terrible. about that the the little the little undulations like bring yeah. it back and be like hey we're bringing back swift or we're bringing back jarvis because it's a cool little route that we liked internally and we want people to experience it that didn't experience in the beta and it's a good place to race that would yeah. actually have been better messaging than oh my god yeah. this giant rock sculpture relieving and i guess it's like a test of like them doing that in the future of like yeah. hey we're going to reveal stuff and we do all this stuff it's like <sighs> i get it but yeah so we have a bad taste in our mouth mouth so it's like <laughs> are we ready to move off of jarvis we're moving off jarvis because okay. we, we do want to move was... in, we, we do want to move into a couple more things but go ahead yeah there was one thing though that that didn't come up in the pre-show that now that we're talking swift i was like maybe maybe we need to hit all on. right what what's your opinion on the new Zwift community live thing? Did you catch what that was? This Zwift oh, the, is putting on an IRL thing? destination thing. Yeah. I mean I I think it's like a Disney getaway. It's like a Disney cruise. Yeah. That's I feel like me, this like is a, like a it, it's almost like an excuse for everybody at Zwift HQ to go ride bikes together, right? Maybe so. and, it it should I, be a convention like a TwitchCon. They should they should do look. They should do this stuff. They don't have a tendency to do it well, and they spend the thing. The problem is, in my opinion, is they they have a problem with the uh, what is it? They're under the microscope because they're the top of the yeah. top of the space, and so anything they do, it's scrutinized. We're scrutinizing them right now. Yeah. I'm okay with them doing that. Like I'm okay with them doing this and they're using the Zwift community live sort of tagline, which is good because it's, it's like it's, it's marketable. Yeah. And people want this. Not, I personally don't want, like I, like I've been to TwitchCon. I went to the first TwitchCon. I was like going there as a industry person to like, you know, represent the company. Right. And just to kind of do things, but there's a, there's a party aspect of it and people like having a party sense and a, and a good time and they like interacting and then they get to talk to the people and you get to interact you get to meet your fans i think that's all good i just i just think that like sometimes they focus on things and they have so many things they're so spread out and they sometimes don't focus on one thing really 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 well yeah i was struggling with it because i i don't dislike it but I also, on the other side of it, I'm like, I understand you have to pay to go or whatever and buy tickets, but I don't believe what you're paying to go is really covering the full expense of what Zwift is putting on here. And I'm like, Zwift needs to be spending their money on the game, not on schmoozing the people oh. IRL kind of thing, right? Like, so I, I struggle with it a little bit from that perspective. I, I, I actually struggle with the yeah. name. I struggle with the name. Okay. I'm a little defensive with the name because it's not a bad name, but it's a name that's already out there. And I, I feel like they've almost taken it away. Even, yeah, even if that true. name they, wasn't going to be used again, like, well, couldn't you come up with something else and just Swift con Zwift convention? Right. That's what it could have been. Well, I, I was, I was frustrated by the name thing. Um, yeah. Just because that name kind of is where it all started with the streaming side of it. And I know they have every right to that, I'm sure, and and all of that. But like, why even go there? Just name it something unique and different. I'm with you. But, okay, I'm not. I'm no. not against it. Yeah. As much as I'm against many things. Uh, but you're not buying a ticket. No, I'm not going to that. No, I'm if not doing it. No. If no. it's 50 miles from your house, 100 miles from your house, you buying a ticket and driving no. down? No. 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 So you, yeah, because it's like transportation is not included, and I think it's twelve hundred bucks or something like no, that. I they would. said, yeah, it's not. I mean, I I like riding my bike a lot by myself, <laughs> <laughs> and so like 
having to be locked into something. Like I don't, like I was talking with my wife this today is, uh, I don't, even if I go to like places, I don't go to museums and like, not that this is going to be a museum. I'm just saying that yeah. like, I like doing my own thing. And sometimes that doesn't need admission and I don't need, yeah. like, I like springing up and popping in and doing random stuff. Uh, paying to go to do this sort of event thing is just not my thing. It's not like I, I, I'm not like a big pay for a tour guide to a place or go to like a museum yeah. and have a tour guide. I like wandering around and staring at things and, and sort of experience it on my own. That's yeah, I think I'd that's, rather that, go with like one yeah. buddy and just be like, let's go look at random maps and figure yeah, out where that's, we're going. That's, kind of that's more you my know, thing. Like, but there's people that like having the sort of like soup to nuts, like, Hey, take care of all my stuff. You know, I fly in, yeah. you got a bike for me. Boom. That's I, there's people to do that. Like the Trek travels, the, the other little destination stuff. Those are cool. And I've been, I've been interested in doing that, but, yeah. uh, which is fine. And if Zwift wants to start to get into that market, that's great. Uh, just make the game flawless and then you can do all that other stuff. Yeah. That's so, kind of my, sorry. I, I took no, us off topic there. No, but it's fine. I was no. curious. I think we go into the, the, uh, this is a big Zwift heavy show because they came out with a lot of stuff. The aerodynamics sort of testing. Yeah. So, uh, this was a Zwift insider article, uh, that was take that took place, excuse me, that took place. I think it came out on the fourth. Uh, the, the article came out like three day, four days ago. Uh, and it was, and I can't bring it up on the screen. So you got to follow along audio only audience. Sorry about that. Uh, we can get into it. I'll bring it up on my, my, my side screen here, but the gist of it is they, they, the team of product developers design, like John Mayfield, and then a bunch of other big, uh, development people from Zwift went to specialized today and they have a wind tunnel, which is in uh, Morgan Hill, California. Uh, I used yep. to live uh, like two hours from it, an hour and a half, two hours from north. So it's kind of, I know where it is. It's in California, specialized headquarters. The testing was bikes, their bikes in game versus what reality is. And they were trying to get the, the, the time or the Delta. I was reading the article, the Delta between what is, uh, Re, uh, reality and what is in the game so like what's slowest and fastest of the bikes the delta between that they wanted to get that more accurate this is good but it's I think overdoing it to a certain extent what's your take I think I think it's yeah. I think it's good that they're doing it but I think like they could have done it they could have simulated it like they could have simulated it in a computer yeah, that I, think, ability? I think it's, I don't, yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't think it's bad, but, you know, basic fluid dynamics. And I think there's enough data out there that you probably wouldn't have to go get your own data. Um, again, this comes back to Zwift spending on money that I'm not sure the bang for the buck is there on this yeah, kind of spin. That's my um, thing. It's like, this probably I, costs yeah, a lot of money. Unless it was donated by Specialized. Yeah, which, you know, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I don't hate it. Yeah, again, but it it feels like a big effort. Part of this article, I think, or maybe one of the recent Swift releases alluded to pack dynamics. Yeah. So let me, and, let me just read this from the article. The team's goal, this is what Eric wrote, mm -hmm. Eric Schlange. The team's goal for these tests was to establish a realistic delta between the slowest and fastest frames in Zwift, which is what I said. Yeah. The, the, the secondary goal, and then he has a parenthesis here, the secondary goals of testing various wheel sets in different rider positions to gut checks the game's, uh, the game's wheel and rider physics as well. But he's going to save that for a, a discussion in another post. And that's the sort of thing is what I think you're alluding to is there's yeah, so much stuff going on. That there was um, on one of resources the... well spent. Yeah, it, there was one of the recent updates that there was a line in there about event testing for Pack Dynamics 5. And I mm. thought to myself, like, I'm okay with Zwift trying to improve things, but I'm a little concerned 
like I think part of it is you need to identify what is your goal. Um, and I, I feel like sometimes we're going into these things. And I think a lot of these processes, a lot of the different programs I've, I've had the same opinion of, they're trying to make changes, but they don't know what a result, a, what is a successful result. Um, yeah, yeah. What is your goal with those changes? I feel like they're changing just to change. Oh, we feel like we could be more realistic if we, change pack dynamics or change bikes, but what does that look like from an impact? It, if it's more realistic, but are you going to make all your players miserable? Because most of the people riding Zwift now don't know what realistic is yeah, outdoors. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't know there what was, realistic was, 200 people packs are. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, They've never like, ridden in one. Yeah, yeah. So don't ever... Rule number one is don't ever read the comments, but I read the comments. Yeah. And there's yeah. somebody that brought this up that like, hey, are we going to have this sort of like make people frustrated because now they're not as fast mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're making the physics more realistic. And this is, this is goes back to my thing, which is I love simulation. This is like totally my thing is like, Hey, make it, make it as real as possible so that it's simulated. Mm -hmm. But is it, is it necessary to go into the wind tunnel and do it in the wind tunnel thing? Couldn't you just like I, like I was saying earlier, can you make your game your game? Like now they're, yeah. now they're leaving their game to make it more real because I think they're preparing for this sort of bike upgrade thing, which is the, yeah. uh, I can't remember what it's called. The garage. Yeah. yeah the, the garage but, uh, enhancements. You use your, yeah. you use your drops and stuff like that. But there's also, and, it, and in the comments, I think, no, and Eric's thing he was talking about, they're spending a lot of effort to get the wheels and the bikes as real as po or as close to mm. realistic as possible but you can't change your cda for your body unless that's coming i don't know and you you're you're not able to improve your race craft as much as you would like you can just improve the equipment and sometimes yeah. it's like i would like to be able to do both i would like to do both mm -hmm. but also like if the physics change because i was doing this the other day like in, I was really talking about an old RGT thing, which was breaking into corners. I think you were in my chat too. And you were like, yeah. you were like, Hey, breaking would be cool. Or you were hard claws, uh, friend of the show. That's the cool thing is like, Hey, if this pack dynamics becomes, uh, not pack dynamics, but world dynamics and like every corner you're slowing yeah. and breaking, then it would be like, Hey, does this handle, does this bike handle better in the corners, but it's really good in the, like, or what a block or yeah. so and so I'm kind of having two thoughts in my head right now but that's the that's the thing what do you think about that no I think I think you're on to something there because you could get down to like tire choice right like yeah. you can have a faster rolling resistance but a little slicker in the corners right it's going to over slow you in the corners maybe yeah. not stick as well but have a lower 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 drag you know faster on the straights yeah. kind of thing um I, I struggle with I, I feel like Swift is still fighting this identity crisis, right? Because it's like, we're going to go to the wind tunnel and we're going to get super accurate numbers on all of our bikes so we can make all of our bikes accurate in the game. How does that work with, we're also going to make it where you can get the Venge and then there's five tiers of the Venge that upgrade things on the Venge? Like, well, but you went to the wind tunnel and got precisely what yeah. that frame is. Maybe they... How do you... There's yeah. not... I mean, to me, the upgrade should be getting a different frame, a better frame, not not a check mark on a on a like. Yeah. If I want to upgrade IRL, I can't go to my bike frame and make it better. That I have was, to buy a new bike frame. I don't know if that was in the comments or if that was actually in the article, but maybe it was in the, some of the comments. Is is if Zwift actually reveals the numbers, yeah, without making Eric having to do tests. And I think you bring up a great point with. If they give you, if they go in and they test, let's say the ver the Venge, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't give you the Venge that they tested that's in the game, and they nerf it a little bit, and then you have to pay for it to get to where it actually is. Yeah, to get the real Venge. I, yeah. I could see that that I could see that being like incentive based, like hey, you mm -hmm. race and you get better or you do whatever. That's okay. I'm okay with that. It's it's this sort of like once it's once it's reached its peak, what else is there to do? Yeah. Because I'm okay with that tiered component that they talked about, right? Like the, you get the bike frame and then you you earn whatever pay drops to upgrade specific yeah, yeah. frames kind of thing. Oh, I, you know? I like, like that. I, I like that concept. But then 
why worry about precisely accurate yeah, between IRL bikes if you're going to put a gamification in there to upgrade them uh, like that anyway, yeah. right? Like it's like uh, it just doesn't. Uh, I don't know. I just but said it, that I was saying this when they when I first was reading the article. I think I said it on my stream or whatever. But it was like, couldn't they just make their own numbers up? Like, I, like <laughs> just make their own numbers up <laughs> and and you know just do it. Like, hey, we 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 used our own wind tunnel. Or like we simulated our we simulated the Wahoo wind tunnel, or they they have a building and they just name it the wind tunnel, and they can make up their own stuff. And I think it'd be kind of cool. So so I'll get on my soapbox for a second. So they're spending money on all of this, and I, I, like I said, I don't I don't have a big issue with it. It just I feel like they're they're being a little bit polarizing in some of you know we're going to go this way, but then we're going to be super you know yeah, scientific yeah. in this way, and it, it, and then you know the past four or five community racing events I've been in, there's been drama about somebody being called out about sticky Watts. And I'm like, all right, why are we going to the wind tunnel and not fixing the dang sticky Watts? Oh, like, right. yeah, can yeah. we, you know, like it just, it, yeah. it, it aggravates the heck out of me because <sighs> somebody actually asked me the other day, like rate, what, what do you think is your, your, what's your favorite platform? I'm like, I, I really don't have a favorite platform. I will. But what I said was, if I know there's a good body of people in Indie Velo or my Woosh to race with, I will generally go there because yeah. there's less chance of me running into that garbage yeah, yeah. in those two platforms. The negativity. And it's, it's not the a toxicity. platform thing. Yeah, yeah, the it's, toxicity. It's, it's, it's the, the toxic and the actual ability to do that, right? Zwift, Zwift has done enough in the game to mask reception issues and that that it 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 escalates the issue on Zwift. People can yeah. still do it on my Woosh, but it's not as bad. Any Velo will actually boot you if you do it. You know, that's yeah. that's the optimum solution. So yeah. I'm sorry. Any Velo is gone. Training peaks. Training peaks. Training peaks. Training peaks. So that that's my little bit of Zwift so soapbox. But you know, I've I've been riding Swift. I've been enjoying it. I haven't been riding a lot. I traveled this week, but yeah. I have not. I'm a paying customer and I still I like I haven't done the Jarvis thing. I don't care. I, I am a paying the, customer for Training Peaks now. I paid for it. Oh, you paid for it? Did you yes. get the you got the free thing or you paid for it? No, I paid for it. I oh, paid okay. for one year of Training Peaks. Um, I, I I did what is it they call it the girl math? You know, you know if I return if I return the clothes and get cash, I can I can spend it on something else and it doesn't oh, count, yeah, right? Yeah. I had I had like one hundred twenty five dollars of incentive money from work that I can put on a Visa oh, prepaid okay. card, so. So it was it was a free it was free to me because it was, was like incentive. a lower yeah yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so so I I took the hundred twenty five dollars yeah. of incentive I miss Trading Peaks though I, forget the virtual you know platforms and all that I missed my analytics in Trading Peaks yeah yeah I had the whole dashboard and stuff in there and weeks yeah and yeah I, so let's power. talk about that let's move to this let's move to this I had Training Peaks for many years and I'm a Mister Device guy I mm -hmm. have like the the core body temp. I have the human hex, which is measures your muscle oxygen. I now have the hydro, uh, the H drop thing, which manages your sweat. It's like a non-evasive uh, thing. So I like a lot of data. I don't analyze it too much, but when I do want to look at it, when I go into training peaks, it's tough. It's not as clean as I know you can build your own dashboards, yeah. but I think that that needs to be updated because the way the Indie Velos handles data, where it's all on one page and I can kind of correlate a, a power output and a you know a heart rate, and then my my other third party data that go through Garmin Connect, I wish that I hope that Training Peaks' web app gets better for athletes because I think yeah. it's I think it's there and and I've talked to people the coaches uh, that have WKO, and that mm. is really really well done. And that's yep. where the basis of it is. But in the web version for an athlete, uh, it's not as uh, uh, easy. Ease of use is not there. Yeah, I can see that. And, and, and there are a few things that I can't see in there that I'm used to looking at that I'll go to intervals. But there's other things that I really enjoy. And it's finding that balance right there. I think there's a few missing pieces they could do to really fill some of those gaps. The thing that they do show really easily that a lot of the other platforms are is like when it pops up, like it'll tell me my first, second, or third peak, yeah, yeah, whatever for the year, right? Yeah, like yeah. so, it's like oh, I did my third 
best five minute power for the year. Like some of these races where I'll get frustrated, like FRR. I went back and looked at some of them and I'm like, well, no wonder I was frustrated. I actually did like my second best five minute in this race and still got dropped. Right. Yeah. Like that. I was like, okay, it, it's not me. <laughs> oh, see, that brings up a good thing where like, that's the, that we talked about this, I think when the merger happened or the purchase happened, whatever it is, is a merger or purchase. Uh, well, no, it's like a merger because mm -hmm. George is working. He just George didn't sell there. it. He's yeah. there. So when you can you can analyze all your data because I play the Magic the Gathering stuff. You can analyze your 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 post matches. So like our race debriefs. Mm -hmm. Man, can you? This is what, feature request. Feature request. If you could replay one of your uh, Training Peaks virtual rides, and then overlay your stuff from from uh, training peaks so it's like it's taking the data that you've pulled into training peaks and you can go through it instead of the end of the ride like you can get you can get heart rate you can get cadence and you can get uh power in all pretty much any race but you yeah. can't get more data from a zwift power not even with power from zwift.com post race like you go look at your post ride you can only like see three three data points right if you yeah. go into Strava, sometimes that stuff doesn't carry over. Like, I don't believe, I think Felty, a uh, friend of the show, uh, he doesn't like sending stuff to Strava because Strava strips his dual, his dual, mm -hmm. uh, his left, right. Oh, so, yeah. if you could, so if you do like an event, you could do more ride analysis by going back and watching a replay of your ride. If they save that, if they could save that data, and watch a replay of your own ride through training peaks virtual without you know you know what i'm saying like you can watch yeah. your ride again like the the dynamics of the ride if they can replay that i don't know if they save that maybe they just save a fit file and the ride the the replaying the ride in its entirety is disappears but in magic the gathering world you can replay your matches where you're playing against another person and it's like every card and then it has because it's like a log it's mm -hmm. like, hey, this card was drawn. You played this card. Well, that's all logged. You could take that log file and then recreate it, right? You can spool it up as, as a local thing. It would run it locally. on. You bring that log file in, it would run it locally on your computer, correct? Do you think that's too, too difficult to do? Or yeah, would that not, I, not be useful? I don't know how many people would use it. I know Garmin used to have a tool. Was it Garmin? I think it was Garmin. Um, what I would record a GoPro from an outdoor ride. So I had the video and then I had the fit file and there was a Garmin program. Oh, that verb. Would read, yeah, verb. It would bring yeah. in the fit file and bring in the video and then you could you overlay, overlay any yeah, data yeah, yeah. information out of that. So if you have that information in a file, a, a, a program like verb, there's no reason that has to be a GoPro. That could be a screen capture from Zwift or something. But doesn't like that work on GPX? So you take the GPX file from your gpx file from your virtual platform and then do the overlay on top of that yeah we well you just use that? you really just used gpx to um line them up you didn't have to necessarily show the gpx or the sync of the air of the and there's still there's still gps coordinates in um in the fit files from these virtual softwares it still it still looks like an outdoor ride it's just not in a real place um, so I think it would still work, but yeah, I mean, it, it's fun, but it would only be good for us. Um, you know, half a percent data analyst nerd people. Yeah. Right. Now, I loved last week. I, I just have to say that how, how Tom was just like, yeah, I don't look at any of that. I just ride. I yeah. just ride. I, I'm doing a workout. I just, I just go hard. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I don't, sometimes I do. <laughs> I was like, I love this guy. Okay. <laughs> he wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Current national champion, Canada. Yeah. And he's he's riding by field most of the time. That's the thing is where you have these cool stories of yeah. an athlete who's like, no, nah, I don't look at them. I don't look at it very much. And I don't have a coach. I just kind of go by a, go by feel and whatever I'm doing. And that's the passion for him, which yeah. is really cool. Some of us... uh like I, I race most, all my time trials, one, I can't see my power and I can't, because the way that I'm in my aero position, yeah, I can't see anything. So I just have to race on, uh, feel. And then I look at it afterwards where there's other people that are uh -huh. looking, they want to look exactly like when you do a time trial, are you looking at your data? 
yeah. the whole time? Well, not not all my data. I am looking at my power. That's what and you I, have. Where do you like position it so you can see it? So mine is usually, I always use like what they call it, the ski bend bars. So my, yeah. and I, I use them and, and it would be right between my hands and I would show, um, it would be something like, I think there was, there was, you know, current power, but then I had like 30 second, five minute and 10 minute power on there. Okay. Um, and you know, I didn't focus so much on the current power. It was the 30 second power, right? Okay. Stay steady, keep that at what my target is. And then, um, were you glancing would, at that the entire time? Yeah. I'm or looking you, at that most of the time. So you have it in your position where you can actually see yeah. it. Like, so your arms are spread apart enough to where you can see yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I, I used a pretty unique position. I, I did a lot of studying on that. I never got into a wind tunnel. I wish I would have, but I started using an up like a, a, a 10 or 15 degree up tilt on those bars okay. a little bit. Um, and from a lot of studies that, that didn't hurt arrow at all. Mm. It kind of brought, you almost hid your head behind your hands a little bit. Right. You know, when you turtled your head, you kind of almost got behind your hands in that position. Is kind of the way uh, I settled in on my most aggressive time trial positions. Um, was my head was kind of behind my hands, so it was pretty easy. Just moving my eyes, I could I could check that screen. Yeah, um, I can't and do got that. pretty good. I, maybe it's my maybe it's my bike, but my position yeah. I've I've changed my position over the years. But even I'm so like my eyes are like pushing way up to see like ahead of the road because I want to be safe. Yeah. I don't want to crash. But I know a lot of people like tuck in and I don't tuck in. I, I keep my head at the same position the whole time. And, and I, I think I haven't been able to find a, a computer that can get me to where I can see it while I'm in my okay. position. I think I think part of it might be you're probably doing way different time trials than me, too. I'm doing time trials. Most of my time trials are on repeat courses that I've done before. They're in the middle of a cornfield and they're pretty much straight. You know, there's a turn in four miles. Yeah. So. Do you have is by looking down? I can still road? see the uh, usually not closed road, but a majority of my local time trial was on a road that had about a five foot shoulder. So oh. I was pretty much riding just to the left side of the white line. Okay. Um, so looking down, I can still see the white line, and when I look up, I can see a mile up the road. So unless in in this road in particular okay. was like freshly paved, so there wasn't. I mean. I knew every bump, every hole. I knew this driveway. I had to slide out in the lane of traffic because they drug rocks out. Like I knew the course that well. Um, the, so you could be dangerous. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I mean, you're right. If 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 something was on the road, uh, it would probably catch me off guard because I was so used to that route. Um, All right, we're gonna look at chat because it's a it's a two two person yeah. breakaway here. Let's go. You want to find somebody in chat? Oh, hard clause is here. Oh, I don't want to. Just, they were laughing just, just at what, what your next uh, device might be. We're a little scared of what the next. I mean, it, it's just going to be like BK oh. is just going to turn into a robot, right? Like, what's the next I, thing I'm looking at? Oh, that's a good question. What's the next thing I'm looking at? So I get uh, devices sent to me uh, by a friend of the show, Bjorn Osenbrink, who was, a, mm -hmm. who was a guest on the show. He sends me devices all the time. There's one that's a lactate. It's a heart rate monitor that has lactate sensors like it's like a it's a chest strap for heart rate but it also has like a a pad i don't know exactly a medical pad that that sort of tracks the saturation of your sweat okay. or something i don't know exactly how it works but it's pretty expensive uh so that's the one i'm looking at so lactate and then there's another one that's like a vo2 mask it's like a mask thing that like analyzes your breath you know what i'm really interested in is something that can identify can measure your metabolism which i think is like the lumen thing there's like a lumen thing there's another ones where it's like from your breath you can uh measure i don't know if these are accurate or scientifically whatever uh metabolism would be good to know how to to, to be better yeah. fueling uh lactate so you know kind of know what's going on uh what's the other one there was a uh, I have the Leomo, which is the uh, on the body sensors. So it's like yeah. position sensors. I don't use it very often because it's a lot. There's a lot of devices, a lot of things you got to connect. Uh, and it doesn't go to Garmin Connect. It goes to their 
specific thing. Uh, there was somebody in Discord talking this week about, and I don't remember the details of it. it it's probably back in the Discord. It's um, a blood sugar. Blood sugar, blood. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. And I know that was one that, like, like the UCI. Oh, yeah, you're not allowed. Yeah, you're not allowed to use it during a, a competition. Yeah, UCI shut those yeah. down, right? In competition. This is one I do. This is one that was recommended to me by my one of my physicians. This is a AKG, which is the cardia thing. Yeah. So it's it, this okay. is a sensor. You put this on your leg, and then your two thumbs here, and it'll go to your phone, and it'll give you like a six. Usually you get like two when you just do your thumbs. You just get like two for your EKG, but it's like a personal EKG thing. So I have that, and then I uh, I got that like right before the pandemic. Yes. Okay. And Flight was asking, what what if you have diabetes? I don't remember what the UCI's rule is specifically on that. I mean, there is a yeah. team type one, so I'm sure there's. I'm sure you can have a glucose monitor while you ride. I think that you can't be using it, displaying it, and feeding yeah. off of it, right? You might get a, like a, a TUE. Yeah. There's a specific kind that I think people could use pretty simply, um, kind of buy over the counter and just display the information and basically feed off of it. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not much into that kind of stuff. They did there was a local cardiologist that did an endurance athlete study locally here like seven years ago. And I got approached by it and I kind of wish I would have done it because they would have implanted a small, um, whatever heart monitor in And it was Bluetooth. And he actually like part of it was like that monitor, he would give us all the data off of it, but that monitor would actually work with like my Garmin watch. <laughs> Hmm. Like, I was like, it, but it, it had like internal body temperature, core temperature, and stuff like that right. on it too, right? Yeah. Like, and it was, it was all about studying. It, he was doing heart studies on endurance athletes, so he was he was coming to the local tri club, getting the Ironman guys. He wanted people that were doing more than eight hours a week, yeah. um, in a study. So, I'm not yeah. much into the the big fancy gizmos though. I'm like into it when it's not, uh, non evasive. So like the, yeah. the thing with the, like it stabs you, yeah. That one's tough. And like, oh, you have to do the, uh, what is it like? Kind of like, uh, uh, it, it pokes you the side, of, or you do it on the tip of your finger, like blood blood sugar, or like a is that like a glucose monitor, like mm -hmm. a blood, yeah. like a blood, yeah, yeah. I'm not totally into that where you have like the thing where it like, and then you yeah. get the blood. Uh, that dog is. Loose. Lulu, Lulu. Go to the show here. So yeah, like I, uh, I'm very into the data, uh, the device. But sometimes the data, like I've I've been capturing human hex data for like every ride since 2019, and that company went out of business. Another like a Spanish company picked up their support, and they have a better, more, uh, what is it? Uh, informative app that they have and so like even though the device is essentially gone i think somebody else picked it up and so you can dive into it i've learned a lot about myself from the core body temperature and the human hex uh about when you do intervals or you do efforts that's the post-race analysis that i really like with that stuff yeah. uh but evasive stuff is not like my my thing i don't like needles at all so yeah Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be curious where technology goes. Like I, I'm all about the science, and I'll I'll read a lot in the studies. And when I was doing when I was doing time trials, I was I was actually going out and like writing the same course and changing positions. Like I yeah, would go that, yeah yeah, I would go ride the exact same course at the exact same power level and track the speed. Um, you know, try and I would do repeats on the same day, right? Like try to keep the same position or the same um, environment, you know, wind speed and stuff like that and get into stuff like that. But I never got much into the, into all the different uh, yeah, devices. Yeah, in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, I would like to do that. And then I go out and I'm like, I just want to do a workout or I just want to get a ride in. Like, oh, I yeah. got to stop, change, oh, I got to test these socks. I got to test this aero helmet. I got to do all this stuff. I do that and you got to have like uh uh, 
what is it? you have to have a speed sensor it's better to have a speed mm-hmm. sensor and then i have the whatever the atmospheric it's essentially your the what is it the air density yeah so you have the speed sensor air density and then you go do your runs and i have really you know, like i'm in farmland and when i ride an hour out of here i get farmland like you have yeah. uh it's just a matter of analyzing the data so yeah oh yeah like nathan says into the data yeah quote unquote yeah, into, into the, the data, data. yeah, yeah. yeah. So what else did we have going on in Swiftland this week or uh, any of the platforms? There was a mess with Sunday Race Club today, but I didn't hear I didn't hear the details of it other than I saw some aftermath and Discord oh, yeah. a little bit. But apparently basically my whoosh is saying they they've been overwhelmed by the number of people on the platform since the national or since oh. the UCI event and they actually had a server problem this morning and some people couldn't get logged in, and I think I, I, if I read the thing right, they delayed the start, but maybe not everybody got in still. And hmm. um, so, you know, it, it stinks that they had a problem, but it's not a bad problem to have either, right? Like yeah, yeah. Swift had these problems in their early days too. Uh, yeah, everyone. Had, I mean, I remember the one of the biggest, oh, the biggest okay. events on RGT after the steering update, or the whatever the the update that came out. That was sort of thing. It was like yeah. a. Hey, we're doing this race and it was like 115 people and it took, and I, and I didn't, I couldn't, I remember I got booted out of it. Like I didn't get to do it. (laughs) And I I remember it was like, or I got clipped out of it and I, and then they were just like, or my computer crashed or something like that. And I just, it's a virtual flat tire. I was like, okay, I'm out of here. What Nathan said is they, because of the problem, they reset after 20 minutes. So apparently maybe they, some people were racing. And oh. they re they reset they reset the race and restarted it just as a mass start. Yeah. Mass start. I'm assuming that's all categories together too, right? Yeah, One, I can, two, that three, can four. happen in real life. I mean, they just the commissaires the moto just rolls up and shuts everyone down. We've right. done, I've done right. that before where they're just like too big of a mess. Just they're just like you 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 you're there. Everyone's <laughs> doing this and you just stop and you're like your heart rate just goes down and you're all of a sudden and then everyone's talking to each other. People go to the bathroom, uh, and then you just kind of roll out again. I, I think that that's good that you can do that virtually with everyone remote. Like I'm, I'm glad that they tried, yeah. right? Like that they tried to do something rather than just shrugging their shoulders and say, flat tires happen and sorry. Yeah. 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 You know, it's things for the people that didn't have a problem and then have like, if you're, if you're in the race and they restart it, you're mad. But if, if you, you, 30 people miss yeah, yeah. the race, yeah, like yeah. those 30 people like yeah, yeah. are, like thankful that they did it so um yeah that's that's but that's the thing is is there's that thing going back to what you're saying is like you would be more inclined to do an event that has less toxicity and so i think that we've lost a lot of that and that's that's what happened that's so the 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 my whoosh and the training peaks and all the other platforms that are starting to oh bike terra has events now uh, that you can have results, which is a new, which is they're pushing their little okay. updates here and there. And so when you had, and we had, we had a little snafu in that as well, where it's like, because we didn't, because when you, at the beginning of the show, when you said Jarvis had just pop in, you spawn here, yep. go to the palm tree, do the ride, do the ride, do the race. Hey, I came in third and everyone kind of fills out the form. That mystique is gone. That's sort of like, Hey, we're we're gonna ride around uh belgium for yeah. three hours and whoever comes across the line first at the coffee shop wins that's kind of gone now that's yeah. where the mentality doesn't exist anymore and i think coming the 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 hope is to have that return because the the spirit of riding indoors returns you know because i was talking about this on my stream last night i was kind of frustrated uh, with one of our friends here on the show, uh, RC Evany, uh, uh, Canadian, mm-hmm. he's, he loves racing and I'm like, yeah. I'm not in the mood to race right now. Like I want, I want more like we were talking about Zwift yeah. producing, coming up with more stuff. And it's like, there's a point where it's like people sometimes are just always positive and that's cool. And that's a good attitude to have. And sometimes that needs to, to spill over into some of us kind of in negative town. Instead of just immediately saying that, like, oh, you're, you're, uh, uh, what is it, bad etiquette or uh, disrespectful. 
because we were having conversations about that earlier in the in, on my stream earlier in the week with people in casual races and you brought that up today where the community mm-hmm. race the community race had this that's community racing all the community racing is casual racing there's no seriousness yeah. to it it shouldn't be taken that seriously the more elite stuff needs to have that scrutiny and like okay i can be frustrated with it sr the sunday race club needs to if you're if you are a rider you need to go hey i raised my hand and object to this you need to fix this or no you guys handle it well like there was a lot on the line and you handled it well or no we need to improve on this so there needs to be conversations between the riders and the developers and have it an open conversation instead of one side's telling the other what to do and usually it's the developer telling the writers hey this is what we're doing and the writers yeah. have no say i actually recently had pretty significant little uh debate i guess it was in game chat and then we resolved it offline after the fact kind of the two of us knew one another pretty well so we had the discussion um after the race but it, it, it's an elite racer that was in a community race and just as soon as as soon as the race got over, just lighten up chat because it's completely disrespectful that people that are at the front of the A race aren't posting dual recordings on every race and this and that. And this was just like one of the top of the hour Swift community races that runs every hour, 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, all year long, you know, kind of thing. And just just kept going and going and going. And I, I kind of popped in there and I'm like, I, this isn't the place for it. Like I, 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 like I understand your point, but in game chat as you're crossing the finish line and then getting like, just they they got in this big kind of heated debate in chat over it, and you know he reached out to me afterwards. We were both streaming at the time, so um, he uh, my vod went up. We can, we can up. nail it down it, who this is. Yeah, man. we can nail this down who this is. <laughs> he All he right. doesn't do vods, uh, oh, okay. so so there's not a vod of his side of it. That, but there was a vod of mine. He went and watched my vod and then reached out to me and was like, no, you know, like I, I'm good because I was I said I'm like, oh, I probably made him mad, you know, like and I, I didn't mean it in any disrespectful way, but uh, pushing elite level responsibility in the community race through chat and 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 kind of. Um, Almost, I, I don't. I, I gotta be careful what term I use there, but it almost feels like a, a bullying or like badgering somebody into you should be doing this, and if yeah. you're not, you're doing something wrong. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not the rules. And he, and he said it's, you know, he said it's disrespectful not to do that with yeah, yeah, your yeah. competitors to show that. And I'm like, as a racer, I do duels because I want to prove that I'm not suspicious. But if somebody else doesn't feel the burden to do that, I don't feel like they should, right? I do that for myself. But I don't feel like it's disrespectful to me that somebody else doesn't do that. That's their choice. And if I want to draw suspicion on them because they don't in my own mind, then that's that's yep. on them for not doing it. But they didn't break any rule. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to solve it in Zwift chat. Mm-hmm. And that was my point was like, you know, you have the opportunity to there's, go do there, races yeah, that require those. Go do those if yeah, you there, feel that strongly. There's about something it. to community sort of policing itself yeah. to a certain extent. Like I used to do duels all the time. I don't do duels all the time. I don't care because they were not that I don't care about duels. I care. quote me here. I care about duels. I care about disclosing all that stuff. I care about it, getting it either to the, to the promoter or to the race control or whoever the athlete analytics or whatever. I care about it a lot, but on a casual race, I stopped caring about it because it's just too difficult to jump through those hoops for something that's not as important to me. I will do it for the echelon racing league and for nationals and stuff right, like that. Where it's required. Where it's required. That's not a problem. I have no problem with it. But and this the, was... yeah, yeah. You're saying you said it in your, in your, in your explanation, the ex- putting elite requirements on a casual race or a community yeah. race is just not fair. It's not fair. And people and the should argument not be was... doing it. Yeah. The argument was they're elite racers. They should always do it. And I'm like, no, but elite racers should be able to walk away from a national on series and say, I'm just going to join a casual race and I'm not yeah. going to start my second head yeah. unit. And I'm not going to fart around with moving my pedals. And yeah, yeah. like we'll this guy fun. has do this guy yeah. has dual recordings and his past Sunday race club, you know, scrutiny, you know, every week for the yeah. past eight weeks, let him race a dang race and just yeah. have some fun. Exactly. Who cares? Yes. And <laughs> no. that's the mentality. I agree with you 100%. So uh, anyway, that kind of off on a rant, but you know, no, it's a good and, rant. 
it, it, but you know what was good about it is after the fact we were able to talk we 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 kind of agreed to disagree but also agreed that um i he understood that i respected what he was saying and the purpose and as a person i do a lot of that to to not for, for someone not to cast doubt on me yeah but i don't feel like my opponent should have to do that right. if they don't feel that same burden and then he kind of came back with the concession of I just get so angry in the oh, races totally. that I lose my filter and I put this stuff in chat. And my point was like, this isn't the place to solve it. You've been here just as long as I have eight, nine, 10 years. We aren't solving this in Zwift chat. And he's like, no, I know. I just get so mad, you know, of racing garbage all the time. And he's talking about the real garbage. And, yeah, yeah, there's, and there's... then he took it out on somebody who was just an elite racer that wasn't dual recording that day. Right. Like, that guy wasn't really a problem, but he's so used to being angry at every race. Yeah, <laughs> um, which is tough because you want people to be included into the community, but then you also want to not have right? a holes in the community, and yeah. so you try to fight fire with fire sometimes. And sometimes you need a hug. People need All a right. hug. Question: We want to. We want to entertain chat. All right. I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything about this. So do you know anything about the Zwift I Camp bring it baseline? Up. I'm not looking at chat now, so go ahead. Z Zwift Camp baseline. It starts tomorrow. Zwift Camp baseline. Uncover Let's... your strengths and train smarter in 2025. Over six weeks, challenge yourself with six rides, three workouts, and three tests tailored to transform your riding approach. So, I I I caught just tiny tiny pieces of this. But it says afterwards you'll get a personalized rider strength report via email spotlighting your standout skill sprinting attacking endurance or versatility so it's like you go through this sequence of things workouts events races whatever and in the end they're going to tell you your your phenotype or you know the, the type of racer that you might be good at so um this is new yeah it starts tomorrow when was it Swift. announced today no, actually, I, I caught wind of this somewhere, but this is this comes back to Swift marketing, right? Like, I think they should make a bigger deal out of this. This is it's probably in our email. We just don't. Do you read those weekly emails from Swift? I don't want I that hat. Do. I don't want that stupid hat. <laughs> I don't. I don't even. I didn't even know about the hat. Marblehead had the hat on any, the other day, and I, I don't, don't even want, know what the I hat is. I want all this stuff if I can delete stuff, and I'm, <laughs> I don't want stuff that I can't delete. That's my problem. Like they give us all this stuff. Oh, uh, but you can sort the you can sort the garage now. <laughs> no, it's not sorting. That's not sorting. It's not sorting. He's rage quit. It's not uh, sorting. No, I think this is good. This is like a 40p profile sort of thing. Like you do these things, yes. which is kind of it's a kind of new take. It's it's a it's a challenge based you doing a hard thing instead of a hour long. Which I've done the 40p, which I like. I don't like doing it, but I like the results from it. And it's like the four. Uh, what's like the neuromuscular and then it's the five minute like you do a two yeah. ten second sprints or something like that and then it's like a five minute effort and then a 20 minute effort and then a 30 second sprint or something like that and then you get your type there's a positive to that which i like but i also like people not knowing what they're good at and just racing right yes so I'm for it, but then I'm also like, don't pigeonhole. You're like, oh, I can't do this race. And then like, they don't do like a, you know, a, a race that finishes on Alpe d'Huez. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Okay, oh, here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Did. Oh, yeah. we have production value, production value. All right. Uh, the per so week one's a sprint booster. It's a workout. Week two looks like a workout. Push your limit in the first test. These are 15 second free ride segments. All right, audio only audience. This is Zwift.com. It's a breakdown of six things. It's week tests. Two. Oh, so it's a workout to then do the test. And then it's a workout to do the test. Then it's a workout yeah. to do the test. So it's one on, one off. Uh, and you just do these. So it's just six weeks. Are they all workouts? Wait a minute. It's six weeks. You're doing yeah, it's through huh? January fifth. It starts tomorrow and it goes through January fifth. Um, is, is that a way to gauge who you are? Is that yeah. really a way to gauge who you are? You do a week of <sighs> one you do one workout a week, or is it like a bunch of workouts for one week and then you do the test? Complete stage one and you'll unlock this with kit. Okay, it's just unlocking kits. Oh, oh Marblehead will do this. 
He's getting Oakleys. He's getting wheels. He's getting a kit. Oh my gosh! So there, there's the workout. All right, okay. Yeah. All right. So it's showing the graph I mean, of the workout. And this isn't an something for you workout. and I, but I think this might be good to get somebody introduced into racing or trying oh, to good. understand their skills. I, yeah. I would. You know what I would love on top of this. Okay, so what is this? What does it go to the top? See what it's saying. What's the goal? What's the mission statement here? Yeah, so that's this uncover your strengths and train smarter in 2025. All right, so small, everybody. I can't, yeah. I can't zoom in. On Over it. six I weeks, challenge to. yourself with six rides, three workouts, and three tests tailored to transform. So it's. Doesn't six say what rides, it's supposed to be three. for. Um, and then it says here can, yeah, the. Rider strength uh, report. Yeah, rider strength report. It um, kind of tells you, oh, you're a time trialist, or no, yeah, you're a sprinter. Tells you if you're yeah, that, that, sprinting, this is all good, this is all good yeah. stuff. But I mean, what's the what's the goal? Is the goal to make you? Is it so? Like, are they wanting to promote racing? Like, hey, you're this kind of rider, so you can race in the community and race. Maybe you can be a person. I don't know. It looks I, like I it's like it. Out of kit. But I what is it's... it for? Is like um, I because this is goes back. I don't know how long ago I said this. They need to do, I think that they, if they really are serious about racing, they should do race clinics and they should do like the little things where they do like a workout and they give you the little on screen thing and they kind of, they have a group ride and they go, Hey, when you're doing this, this is what you need, like reading the race. And they kind of do little scenarios and they kind of just explain to the, to the community, which is not going to get everyone because it's a voluntary sort of thing. But if you could get people to learn racing, you can race however you want, but like the general rule of like, what, what, is, what is a breakaway? What is not attacking your teammate? These sort of unwritten rules. Oh, the They're etiquettes. Not, yeah. The etiquettes and the, you know, and sort of like the general, the general understanding of things, like a introduction to these things instead of just fitness and health i think the 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 seriousness will come from the fundamentals that's how i take so this one faq i think sheds a little bit of light into what you would expect on this it says you should receive a performance email upon completion of the sprint test attacking test and endurance test you can complete these tests as many times as you want if you think you can improve the performance and you should receive an email within 48 hours of completion of each of those tests. So three of these things in here are tests and when you complete the test, you'll receive some sort of okay. performance assessment of the test. And then when you're all done, you'll get a final report of everything okay. that you've done. So I, I'm, I'd be curious to see what it is if it if, if it's almost like a, um, a simulated coach kind of thing uh, analyzing your phenotype or what what it is. But I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know that I, I want to invest I'm, I'm, that much time into it. But yeah, I'm probably not going to do it. But I think it's good for people to do. I think yeah. it's good for people to do. I will not be doing it. <laughs> how many people will do it for the test, and how many people will do it for the kit? 75% for the kit, 25% <laughs> for the for the actual badge. And, or no, 70%, it's 20% for the badge and 5% for the actual data. Right. And it should be 75% for the data. Yeah. <laughs> so it should Fez be. Fez says, when in doubt, just tab through the workout. Just tab the workout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knows. Fez knows. Fez yeah. is day. Okay, so I want to go back to the thing you touched on at the beginning because Fez is yeah. here friend of the show fez mark fez uh -oh. he has data he he's extrapolated the data because he's like mm -hmm. a web developer or whatever and he can get his previous race score of the race that he did and then it shows what it improved on or if it stayed the same and so it's in the data and so it he is. can yes Yes, it, it is. Can. It is. Um, let me. Have you done? I'm, have you, have you done your own, or have you seen the thing that right, was built? All right, all right, all right. But you Here said, hold on. But you said something. I'm hiding this. Okay. A little bit. You no, but you, hold on, hold on. Go, let me go back to the beginning because you said yeah. you said that you could see your race score go up. 
Yes. So are you saying you can see your race car go up because there's that arrow? Or does it show you what it was and what it is now? So, so here, here's what has changed. Um, when, when race score rolled out, I was doing a lot of ladder races early October and like, I was tracking my race score when I would do race score events and up to the point that they did the production rollout, your race score was only impacted by race score events. So I just, in my head, that's, if I wasn't selecting a category based on race score, it shouldn't impact my race score. Mm. Right. I did a ladder race and I went to get into a race score event the next day. And I'm like, like my race score changed like 15 points overnight. Like what the heck happened? And so I hit up one of my buddies that was on the ladder race the night before, who also was, was doing similar to me was kind of trialing the rate, the, the race score stuff a little bit. And he said the same thing. So I opened a ticket with Swift and I said, you know, like, it, I'm okay if it is, but is the latter race is supposed to be impacting race score? Like, I didn't think this was supposed to happen. And they're like, oh, yeah, we, you know, and, and James Bailey actually replied to me eventually. And he said, like, this has been communicated to the latter race league and, and other leagues like FRR. Basically, any race impacts the race score, even if it's not a race score race. Like, they, they kind of made that that adjustment. So... But so then my, my, my reply back to that is if a race is going to impact race score, that's fine. But in the results, you should publish the race score information to eliminate these questions. Because if I pulled up my results, my mm -hmm. results look like a race from six months ago when race score didn't exist. It showed me my, my average letter, watts, my average category. heart rate, my time, but it didn't have any arrows. It didn't have any, yeah. any race scores on it or anything like that. And like, if it impacts my race score, you should put the race score information in the results because then I'm not going to ask the question. I'm like, oh, this was intentional. It's clear when I open the results screen, it's got a plus arrow and a number. So yeah. they, 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 I did a ladder race this week and it, it now has that in the results. So even though it's not a race score event, it is impacting my race score. And now when I look at it on my Zwift companion app or on the website, it actually shows me that it impacted my race score. It does not, I think Swift needs to do a better job of how much each event impacts. Like we need to be able to look at history, things like that. Um, somebody actually came up with a really good idea in my chat this week that said, instead of a plus arrow, give me a number. Actually do like plus five, Yeah. plus eight, yeah, yeah. minus five, minus 10, right? Just give me a number then if you have the number and where you finished, you know where you started. Right. So, But yeah, so Mark Fez, uh, he, uh, well, Ferris, Mark Ferris, but uh, Fez is his nickname, whatever. He has, he's been able to, to pull it up and you're going to pull the, you're going to have this data that actually has this stuff. And he built his own sort of way to see that, to then go in and see where he was and where he, is now uh but that was the thing that i was like this this is goes back to the you know the drinking game and all the times yeah. we talked about race score and i'm like i still don't understand what's going on where he actually has he's taking the data and he's building his own thing so that he can see the data so he can learn from it right and it's right. sort of like this gathering of data you're gathering the data because you're deep diving into it because you guys are number guys you guys are number crunchers so having that would be way more beneficial to go oh this was this was like i should well it is beneficial because it's better to see like hey i was here and i moved up or i here's where i was and i moved down but if you're going to race with people that have the ability to you know you can move up it can weigh your your race score you would race in a different way if you had this information going into it, right? Yeah, and I think just, I think what's frustrating to me about this, I I, I don't know that it would change how I race, but just, we're, we're talking, we're data geeks, right? And people trying to, to understand race score and a little bit more of what's going on. Um, I think what's frustrating about this is it shows that Zwift has the data, they're just not giving it to us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this screen here. and I, I blew it up a little bit so it might be easier to read. But it's, I also scrolled down to make sure it was just my data on the screen here. Um, this is in, yeah. Keep you talking, I'll see if I can boom. 
this is in the JSON. I can blow it up a little bit more too, I think. This is this is in the JSON stuff behind the results in Zwift. So you can see here this highlighted chunk that I put in here. Um, it tells me what my new score is. It tells me what my previous score was. And it tells me whether it was an increase or not. And then it'll actually tell you if it was like a, I think it says like a watt increase or something like that too. So if you broke a power thing. Um, but it, it's interesting that this data is in the data stream. And somebody was asking that in chat, like, you know, where is this? This is this is in the JSON kind of behind the events and it's public. It's not hidden. Um, thanks, Fez, for, for sharing that. Fez was sharing some stuff too. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Swift starts building off of this a little bit because you know, the data junkies we have behind the scenes and some people were panicking like, oh, you know, the, what, what are you hacking or whatever? And this is a, this is, I, and I, I intentionally had hid the, the path on here because we don't need a thousand people writing JSON programs to try yeah, to go yeah, yeah. read this data. Um, but this is a public facing uh, URL that, that gets this information. You just have to have the right combination of information to put in there with the with the Zwift event ID and the and the and the starting pin and stuff, and this all comes out. Um, I like I like the simplicity of what it is now, because for somebody you know, like I'm, a big dumb animal to a certain extent. I I, I like that you guys know that that stuff is there. Like you and Fez have sort of extrapol extrapolated this, but this I like the Fez. simplicity of it. But I think it's too simple in the regards to, like, oh, you just moved up. And it's like, yeah. it would be nice if it referred to, like, I think one more column of, here, I'll go back to whatever. I think it just illustrates that there's a lot of, a lot of stuff behind the scenes in Swift. Yeah, the, the, the Swift's sort of, keeping their, their stuff simple. Which right? is fine. I like, yeah, I like it simple to a certain extent. If it's, if it's, uh, simple enough to where you can digest it and go okay that's what i need now if you want more under the hood you could like whatever uh what is it uh dive deeper into it i wish the score was in the game so it kind of showed you oh you moved up in the score and then i wouldn't have to go to the to the to the dot com if you guys want to dive deep and get like you know like uh fez's like you can pull fez's clip he might have it and then uh maybe you can show it on your thing and i'll, I'll go bigger again but having it they're i'm glad that they're gathering the data it's not like they're just like oh this is all we have like we have tons of stuff we're just showing you what we think is beneficial for the the end results and the writers to see uh so i'm for the simple but a little bit more clarity on like hey you were this and you moved up this much and you can kind of go oh okay cool when i race it i race i do this if i do a weight more weighted race and do you think that they're going to, I just thought of this question. Do you think they're going to have higher weighted races? Like the numbers will be weighted more. And when you sign up for a race, they'll be like, Hey, this is a higher weighted race. I, the races should be self weighted. You know, it, you know, it, it, it's supposed to have a strength of field. Um, it's supposed to have a strength of field portion in it. And, and we all kind of know that that, that doesn't, it, not that there's not a strength of field in there at all, but it doesn't seem very strong on strength of field, mm -hmm. going from a 50 person race to a 10 person race. And like me, if I'm near top of category and I get fifth place and somebody near bottom of category gets fifth place, we seem to be moving up about the same amount. It, it just seems a little odd, yeah. right? There doesn't seem to be enough for that. So I don't know that they're gonna have any like priority events necessarily to get you more movement. Um, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Was that, the way it was, was that the way it was in Zwift Power? When it was like, if you got in a race with people that, that's that's how I, so that's my frame yes. of reference. Yes. Right. Zwift Power has a Zwift, has a race score that's still in there and I still look at it. Um, that, right, it, if I have to almost win a race to gain race score now because I'm usually one of the top three or four in race score joining an event. So I won't gain points I laugh because sometimes I laugh because I'm like, I'm contributing points. It's similar to, 
to other games and like ELO type things. It's like if I blow up in a race and end up 20th, it's like I've gifted other people points because me being there increases yeah, right, right. the strength of field and, and allows the winners to get more points. So, you know, something as we're going through this conversation that I thought that might be simple for Zwift to do if we have data junkies who want to know all this data after a race, um, like opt into or allow you to opt out, but like after every race you complete, send a summary email. When the event is complete, send a summary in email that has more information about the race if you want to deep dive into the data. But that also gives you a reference of that information, right? Information that's not in the fit file. What place did you get? Scores, things mm-hmm. like that. If it, it, I can choose to get the email or I can choose to not get the emails, but that they have, I mean, we're all logging in with an email account, right? That's how we're connected to Swift. So after every event, when the event closes, if I'm if I'm opted into it, send me a summary email with the event results, with the deep dive data in it, right? Like right. like you're saying, in you don't have to change the Swift Companion app and all that, right? Like it's and you know it's allow an, somebody it's to. An, yeah, it's 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 an after the fact. Yeah, you, an you analysis sheet kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, like and your you can, uh, race results that you get emailed from like USA Cycling or whatever. Yeah. See, and that's the kind of stuff I, I wish Swift would be committing some time to is, is thoughtful things like that. More roads, not... There'd have to be an opt-out because I wouldn't want that email. Right. Uh, some people don't <laughs> want that email. But other people do, right? They're going to have they're gonna have rules. They're going to file those yeah. things and they're going to they're gonna pull out an email from oh, yeah, three years ago when yeah. they beat me in a race, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, but it did say like, because uh, there, there's that extra there's stuff they're pulling, which is good. And right. they should be, they should have that available. I like the simplicity of it. And I think it was just too simple because it's so it's the simplicity of it is it's so hard in the dot com profile. Like when you scroll down to see mm-hmm. that sort of movement, whether you get the arrow up or the arrow in the line is you don't know where you were. Like it's yeah. already moved you and you're like, oh, where did I, where did I go? And I move up. To, oh, hey. Oh, I wasn't really paying attention. I was just racing. Like that's the sort of thing as you race on feeling like, oh, this is what the outcome was. I don't know what I was and now what I, because in your profile, it shows what your race number is, but it doesn't really like easily show up anywhere else. No. Like it's not in the game. Like the race score is know, not in, yeah, yeah. You have to, yeah, know, you have to it. know And if you don't know what up. it is, you can't yeah. compare it to what you were or what you are now. So. And that was my kind of my complaint on the ladder race thing we figured out that the ladder races were changing our race score. But before the way we tracked our race score history is I went back and looked at my last race score event I did. And I'm like, Oh, I ended that race at a 654. And I, after this race, I'm a 674. So I gained 20 points. But then I realized in between there, I did a ladder race that hasn't had no race yeah. score information in the thing. And it had also adjusted me. So and that's when I had to do a little digging to figure out what was happening. So is this all changed now that everything is a race score race? Well, it looks like they're just displaying now. Not everything's a race score race. Like I still do ladder races. Ladder races have nothing to do with score or but category. My results. Are they, are they still category? No, race ladder just, races have never been. The only your team in a ladder race can't go outside of like a three category range on the Zwift racing app, but we can challenge any other team. Like mm. I can be racing, you know, Nathan Guerra on ladder races. If we challenge the team he's on. You we, mean racing app that third party site? Yes. That's what they use. Ladder ladder they, uses that as they, as a source for. They whatever. use that just to be like your, your strongest and weakest rider on your team can't be separated by more than I think three or four oh, okay. categories. Um, which those categories, there's 10 of those categories. So it, you still have to be in a fairly narrow band, but like Marblehead is a two, I'm a three, and a lot of the other guys on our team are fours. Okay. Uh, we're basically twos, threes, and fours. And are they using Zwift racing app because, because they have access to that data and they can't get it from Zwift, or is it because that's a better system for them to get to get that range to make sure it's they're using that as a source for fairness? You know, I don't even know why they need it, to be honest with you. I, I don't know why they chose that or why they need it. To me, um, the way the ladder races work is it just works 
it just works itself out anyway. If you lose, you go down, and if you win, you go up. Yeah. I think the only way it causes a problem is if you have like three, you know, high level A racers, and then you have like three C racers or four C racers. Mm. Depending on who you put on the roster for a given race, you could be, you know, up here or all way down here on power. Like this at least makes a team more consistent in their results. Okay. But a team would want to do that anyway. Like, I don't think you should force a team to do that. If they want to choose to have a D rider and an A rider on the team, so be it. That They aren't going to perform very well if they stick that D rider on the roster. Um, you know? That... Maybe it's just a safeguard. They're like, hey, we'll just use this as a resource to have, yeah. to not have any, you know, curveballs thrown our way. They're policing probably... something that I think yeah. is self-policing anyway, right? A, a team isn't going to perform well if they have a broad range of power on their team anyway. Right. But um, but it, it, it's good racing, but it, that's where it kind of threw me off is it when you do a ladder race, it still impacts your race score, which is actually interesting because there's only 10 people in the race. You know, my team did pretty well on it. So Marble, you know, Brian won. Um, I got third. One of my teammates got second in that race. So we got a bunch of race score points mm -hmm. out of that. Um, so... It's kind of interesting. We can we can climb the race score ladder pretty quick doing ladders. Right on. All right. Anything, else, anything more interesting from this chat that we probably shouldn't look at? Uh, no. Does it impact? Get your questions in. Get your questions in because we're about to wrap up. We can... Does it impact your race score because the power profile? No hard clause. It's it's directly impacting your race score based on results. It's not the power. Um, I actually confirmed that. I, I had a direct conversation with James Bailey about that. Um, your results in FRR ladder races, I don't know if it's every single race on Zwift, but a lot of non-race score events that are races, they have to be races, not group rides, will still impact your race score based on your finished position. And that's that's a little-known fact that I think speaks getting obvious now that they're actually displaying the race score results in the in the event results page so that helped a lot so so they're, they're doing some good stuff what you got any fun stuff coming up brian or are you just riding i'm just riding well i'm turning just turning the furnace I'm, on turning the heat on i'm and trying riding. this is okay yeah this is a good topic maybe we can finish up with this but i'm having a tough time with motivation like nothing's motivating me I'm busy with life. That's one thing. So I'm just doing workouts, which I never did. I yeah. never did. And then I was talking with RC last night and I'm th after the fact, cause I was like, I don't have any interest to kind of do uh Jarvis or any of those stuff. And I, like I said yeah. this earlier, like he's just ra He like, he still enjoys racing. Obviously he wants things better. Of course we all want, like, that's the thing is we've all come to the conclusion that we always want Zwift to give us more and better. Right. Yeah. But I, I remember last year I raced every single day in December. No, no, maybe that was two years ago. I can't remember exactly when it was, but I raced like every day in December one year and it really upped my sort of like, I was really interested in racing and mm -hmm. there's some, there's some, uh, benefits from racing all the time not even thinking about it, not even putting any effort really into it. You just show up to a race and you go hard. That fitness one will come to it. But I'm at that point where like, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to push myself. Not that I don't want to push myself because I don't think I can push myself. It's just like, I'm kind of like enjoying not pushing myself outside of a workout. And now I'm like way into like the structure of a workout and like having like a routine yeah. And that seems more satisfying to me than going in and getting frustrated with Zwift. Like Zwift doesn't make me happy to, to like a certain extent. Like I haven't got to that turn off the frustration from the game itself and just focus on the fun of the racing, which is what RC is saying. And I totally was thinking about that long term last or not long term, but whatever. I spent some time thinking about that. Like, man, you should just throw everything, like just push everything away and just race and just have fun racing. I haven't gotten to that point yet. So I'm like, let's do structure, maybe structure or something I can do. And that's the thing is like, like I go back to bike terror is fun to me because yeah. it's not, it's not serious enough to where it's like, I'm invested a ton of effort into it. Like I did with Zwift because when you're the, the essentially the, the go-to besides Peloton for people, the go-to for 
indoor cycling, racing, computing, competing, community, all that other stuff. I, I don't, I particularly liked RGT because it was like, like kind of what we talked about the, the Ziff community live stuff or whatever that Zwift community, like I like going and do my own thing. I like that was Zwift or with RGT and RGT has gone and I don't have bad blood, but I do think about when I see RGT, I'm like, oh, I miss RGT. And people ask me, do you miss RGT? Yeah, I miss RGT. I liked RGT. People like Zwift, but I don't know if they really, really like Zwift because they haven't tried other stuff to go, hey, I really like it because I don't like the other stuff. It's just they only know this, and I get frustrated in that sense, and that's where the, my motivation is kind of in a lull. Yeah. That's the long answer of, like, I, I know I should be doing, like, two, three hours of noodling and talking and having a good time. I don't do that as much as I used to. Yeah. Well, it's fine in the fun. I mean, it, and we all go through the seasons. I, I kind of feel a little similar right now with the fun side of it. I, I got frustrated with FRR and then kind of was losing my mojo a little bit. Jumped, I jumped back into some racing and I've enjoyed it. I had some forced travel that kind of gave me a little bit of a break. But even like I, I got got home on Thursday and I did a ride on Friday, which was fun. It was in my whoosh. It's a great race. It's actually, you know, like two guys got off the front. We, we reeled them in, you know, two miles from the finish line and then they killed us. But, you know, I, I had fun with that, but still yesterday, like I, you know, life got in the way. I, I shouldn't say life got in the way. I choose, I, I chose to let life yeah, get yeah. in the way. I chose to do other things and this wasn't a priority for me. Um, and I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. Like when I get on here and race, and it kind of goes back to that question I got in my chat the other day that I mentioned about what's your favorite platform. And I'm, I'm kind of platform neutral right now. It's, it's more about finding a race. It, it, and for me, it usually is a race. It's, it's finding something that keeps me motivated, right? And, and a workout's not going to do that for me right now. It, it, it sounds like it is for you. For me, it's having the carrot to chase. And I know on Friday at noon, I can jump on my whoosh and get that in the veterans race. Most of the rest of the time, I can do that on Swift. I, I, I did do a Training Peaks ride uh, this week, and it was fun. I, I raced some bots, and they destroyed me on the velodrome. And but I got, I, I got the reminder of what uh, Training Peaks or Indie Velo was, and I want to get back there a little more because I forgot how fun the bots can be. Um, so, um, but it's I, I think we all kind of go through those seasons, right? And part of it is. I think sometimes it's not healthy to force yourself through those seasons and kind of yeah. let them play out, right? Like if you just badger yourself into, I'm going to race every day because that's what I'm going to do and that's what it worked before, right? You're going to burn yourself out. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I watched it, a movie last night. I didn't yeah. want, I didn't, I had, a, I had the workout I used Wahoo system and I put on movies Yeah. and I was watching a movie. I'm like, I don't even want to look at one of these programs right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather stare at a black screen sometimes because I do invest a lot of mental uh, whatever processing on it. Like, oh, I can yeah. do this, and what about this? And I have ideas about this. Like, we are like uh, another topic. We could talk about the broadcast of stuff. I yeah. think the broadcasting of stuff is not showcasing as well as it should. And I was using like NFL broadcasts and other things like that because, and I get it, they're different. One's a real life sport, but like the emotion of the writers, there's no emotion on these avatars. And it's like, it's hard for me to kind of like go, I'm really excited if I don't, not that I need to see the people. I know how to, I have a good imagination. It's not like I need the imagination to see them drinking yeah. a water bottle like when the writer drinks a water bottle i know how to make things up like i'm good with making things up it's the zwift the zwift emotionless avatar is not as exciting as it should be because it's yeah. sort of stagnant when it was 2020 2021 when these races were starting to pop off and everyone was kind of vectored in on it and everyone would do the ZRL and then the Premier League would do it or whoever was doing it. Then you'd be like, oh, wow, I was way into it. Because we do it. We write it and then we watch it. Well, but even, how do we get it? So hold on. Let me. How, how do we get it so that people that don't do it are excited for it? And even before that, I think back to when, like, 
we had the amateur broadcast of, you know, there was always someone broadcasting the KISS um, 6, it was 6 p.m. UK time, I think, on Tuesdays, right? Like, that's the race everybody showed up to. Mm -hmm. And if if Nathan wasn't broadcasting it, two or three of us were in it, right? The Barneys of the world at the time or the Felties, like, everybody showed up to it. You could find four or five, similar to what you see in the World Series now, right? But this was community racing. Anybody could join us. There was four or five people streaming it. There was very often... You know, Swift Community Live, Nathan, somebody like that covering the race. There are community races. And if you wanted to get into the hype races, you just showed up on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Or, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it was 1 p.m. But um, we don't have that. We don't, we don't have that for the average Joe now. We don't, we're not getting yeah. any coverage of that other than us that just stream our, our rides. But it's not, it's not 15 of us in the same ride streaming, and, and you get that. And you get that drama of an actual broadcast to watch it. Um, I, don't, I don't know how we get that, but we had that, you know, six, oh, we did have that. Yeah, six years that's, ago. That's the thing is, like, I think we need to, to grow more. I think yeah. we're, from a broadcasting standpoint, is it's, it's a little stagnant. And I know that's the limitations of things. There's, there's things that I was, like, bringing up in my, my stream about how do we improve? How do we get better? You know? And it's like, yeah. sometimes it's the settling. We're settling for things. And I'm like always trying to push it. Like, that's kind of like what we do this show. It's like, we're pushing, we're pushing things to, uh, converse about it so that it can get better. You know? If you stay content, you get complacent and you fall behind. Yeah. Right. Like you gotta, you gotta be, yeah, you gotta be progressive. Of, yeah. That's the, the, and I know there's limitations with what, uh, like broadcasters can do because of the build, because of yeah. the, the different things that the games are allowed to do. Uh, so I understand that, but it's also, uh, I just want, I want to, I want it to not be, Oh, this is what we've been doing for the, you know, the last, you know, like innovate, let's continue yeah. to innovate. Well, you know? we'll see where the season takes us. We're just, we're just coming into the hot season. Is lots that, of tools, the season year round? lots of investment, right? Season used to be year round. Well, yeah, it's peaking though, right? It peaks. Yeah. It peaks now through February first or so. Yeah, I mean that was a that was a uh, what was it? The was it in like September? Was the start of the season, or is now? Is it pushed back? Yeah, I mean technically, I think like you start getting people indoors, but the the massive numbers are usually right after January, but like. You know, for for my area still, right? You're getting nice days outside still, right? It's right, okay. it's sixty. It was sixty degrees outside today. You're gonna ride in a regular old kit, you know, and enjoy the weather daylight today. You're still gonna get that through, you know, December first in most areas in the northern hemisphere. That is the festive the festive yeah. five hundred is when everyone kicks off, right? So when it's yeah, seven. and the and the New Year's resolutions and you know. that enough i think that's enough for people i think that's enough how do we have an hour and 40 minutes man and we didn't even have a lot to look at i know because we know how to we know how to blow smoke <laughs> they're calling me out i used the ultimate zwift hack today and nobody nobody busted my chops i realized about 40 i realized about 40 minutes into my uh tour of autopia ride that the coffee stops acted in those rides and it's just repeating that jarvis loop 10 times and that hill's brutal not about just like run this, the coffee thing. On about the sixth loop, I realized I had a coffee stop, so I got a nice three-minute rest and second wind for the last couple laps. I love how that's that's actually one of my favorite things. Is it's that so contentious? <laughs> Nobody actually called it out. It was pretty funny. And then Grim was up the road for me, and he coffee stopped on another dude, and and the guy was busting his chops more kind of in a joking way, and he's like. I pulled you for your entire coffee stop. You can at least do one pull now or something like that. <laughs> it, was like, it was pretty funny. I don't think I've ever, I forget to use that thing. I forgot about it until somebody pulled up on me with the coffee stop. And it was like, it was, it was like the, the heavens opened up and I was like, Oh, I've got a coffee stop. It took me about 10 seconds to find it. I'm like, Ooh, all right, I'm taking a break. <laughs> all right. We're going to get out of here. All right. Uh, thanks BK. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, let's play the music, even though there's no music. I'm the one who turns off the stream now, so Bye, thanks, everyone. Take no care, everybody. Tonight. No flute. No flute. Take care, everybody. Bye.